Good night, Dal. See ya. See ya. Right, uh, let's see if we can tag in Cheryl. Okay, here we go. Righto, what's going on here? Hopefully we're, <coughs> we're on. It's saying live, so let's see if we can get this fired up. Okay, so, <coughs> so it's just me at the moment. Um, so thank you for joining, it's just me at the moment. Cheryl, has uh, her daughter has just had a meltdown. So she just sent me a text to say, please, please, can you get started? Jane, hello, how are you? Thank you for joining. Uh, Cheryl saying sorry, guys. Kids, mania, no dramas. Gabby, thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching with Jeff and I just recently, which is great. Um, so hopefully Cheryl will have her uh, daughter's uh, issues sorted soon and she can join me. Uh, but I thought what I'd do is I'd get on here and start myself. So tonight I want to talk about... Uh, hi, Jane. Yeah, Cheryl and I. It's just me at the moment. Pat, hello, buddy. How are you? Uh, look, I wanted to talk about tonight limiting beliefs, or we wanted to talk about limiting beliefs, and how that can impact your journey from a property development point of view, because one of the biggest things that I find, uh, thank you, mate, uh, Pat saying get a handsome, thank you, mate, you're always welcome to comment with those sorts of uh, comments. One of the biggest opportunities we have is to push forward the various beliefs that we have, or limiting beliefs, because the reality is that limitations only exist in our mind and so for us we need to recognize that and so if you want to make a fist of property development if you want to be successful in property development then you've got to work out how do you break through the limiting beliefs that you have in order to move your life forward so limiting beliefs such as fear limiting beliefs such as doubt limiting beliefs such as lack of self-worth <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and so all of these things are going to be reasons that are going to hold you back on your property development journey and that's the sole reason that um, you know we've gone and created a program called the Psychology of Property Development, I'm, and I'm not here to plug that, although probably I just have. But the reality is that in order to be successful in property development, in fact, in order to be successful in business, in life, and so on and so forth, um, you know, I bring it down to 10% uh, of it is going to be attributed to knowledge. But the thing with knowledge is. Just because you know something uh, doesn't mean you're going to use it. And in fact, the Chinese proverb is to know and not to do is to not know at all. So knowledge is not, um, is Cheryl saying, I welcome everyone to contribute and ask questions and comment uh, back, Tony up. Thank you. Ray, hello, mate. How are you? So knowledge is about 10%. Um, Cheryl, are you, we're going to get you on now. So let's see, if, you, ready, you tell me if you're ready to come on, Cheryl, and we'll get you on. Knowledge is 10%. 15% is based on skills, so that is you can know something, uh, but can you actually pull it off? Can you actually do it? Can you perform the task in property development? Can you, uh, you know, execute on those skills? But 75% of it sits in between your ears, uh, and the bulk of that is uh, around, you know, well, it's all around mindset, psychology, attitudes, and so on and so forth. And one of the biggest contributing factors to people not being successful in property development is, um, is, the, uh, is the limiting beliefs. Jeff, uh, thank you for watching, mate. And again, thank you very much for a great session. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I uh, bet you thought you'd come on here and see Cheryl as well. Uh, she's just trying to sort out uh, a little uh, personal crisis with her daughter who's had a little meltdown, but that's okay. Uh, we're going live anyway. We're, we're, anyway, we're soldiering on. And so it's all about how do you, uh, how are you able to work through the beliefs? Now, why are beliefs important? So I've done a few drawings for us just to um, depict it. So hopefully you can see this here. Uh, hopefully that's the right way around. If you could let me know, that'd be great. But I think I've done this before, but I'll do it again. Uh, how it works is that um, do humans have unlimited potential? And the answer to that question is yes, we do. Uh, if we have unlimited potential, then uh, do, uh, do we tap into our results that indicate our unlimited potential? The answer is no, we don't. Like our results, thank you mate, it's the right way around. Our results do not uh, indicate that we're using our unlimited potential. Uh, um, is it because of our activity, a lack of activity or poor activity? Not necessarily, because you can do the right, act sorry, you can do plenty of activity, but it mightn't be the right activity. So you could be very busy, but you mightn't be sure productive. So the answer is that your the results aren't to do with the activity. The poor results are to do with your beliefs. They're to do with the lack of certainty, the lack of belief. Uh, and so here's how it works. Uh, if you don't believe that you can do something, then 
Do you tap into your potential? And the answer is no. And if you don't tap into your potential, what happens to your activity? Your activities are low. And if your activities are low, what happens to your results? Results are low. And then what happens to your beliefs? You say to yourself, see, I told you I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't do that. Right? And so you reaffirm the limiting belief. You say to yourself, no, I knew I couldn't do that. I, I knew I was crap at that. Right? But here's how it can also work the other way. Right? So if you believe that you can do something, if you have certainty around something, then do you tap into your potential? And the answer is yes, you do, because you believe that you can do it. And when you tap into your potential, what happens to your activity? Your activity is increased, providing it's the right activity, it's productive activity, but it's increased. Uh, then what happens to your results? Uh, your results uh, are improved, right? So you have better results. And then from a belief point of view, you say to yourself, I knew I could do it. I knew all along that I could do it. And so the idea here is that you want to be able to get it onto a, onto a positive snowball as opposed to a negative snowball. Now, in order to get the beliefs, in order to get the certainty, how do we do it? Well, you have to see the results first. You have to go backwards, right? You have to go backwards, see the results first. And how do you see the results? You see them through visualizing. You see them through affirmations. You know, I just touched on it in a previous live that I was doing around visualization. <clears throat> you want to see yourself doing a particular something, perhaps, uh, you know, the signing off on a contract or, uh, you know, subdividing a block or, uh, uh, you know, whatever, dealing with a real estate agent, whatever it might be, or, or actually, you know, your reward. So it might be spending your money, uh, going off on an overseas holiday, but you want to see yourself uh, into the future, but you want to do that right here and right now. Chris, hello, mate. Uh, and so you want to do it in the present state. Uh, and so that's one of the first things around visualization. Now with visualization, it's not about closing your eyes and looking forward and seeing uh, yourself into the future. You want to do it in a, in associated state. So what does that mean? David, hello. It means that you want to see through your own eyes. So disassociated means that you're looking down on yourself like an out of body experience. Whereas the right way to do it, I believe, is an associated state and that is to look through your own eyes but also you want to then have the emotion of you doing that particular something because our mind, it processes things based on emotion. So the more that you can be emotionally connected to something, then the greater chance you have of achieving that. Right, and I just shared uh, recently with another audience that I visualized my farewell speech 18 months before um, actually delivering it. And every single day I visualized it. And I had an enormous amount of emotion that was set uh, or linked to that. And it's because of that emotion. But it's not just about the visualising. You've got to go and do the work too, right? Um, Cameron Price, how are you? Uh, mate, look forward to seeing you on the weekend. Uh, it's not just about the visualising and the emotion. You've still got to do the work as well. But part of it is to see the result first. The other thing that you can do... Uh, G'day, Jim. How are you? The other thing that you can do is through affirmations. The things that you say to yourself. You say to yourself that you do have the skills and resources required to be a successful property developer. Right, I have all the time needed to be able to do this. Uh, you know, so keep saying to yourself a whole range of positive affirmations, and you need to say it out aloud. And why do you say it out aloud? Because your subconscious hears it. Because your subconscious then hears it and it starts to believe it when you say it over and over and over again. So if you've got, if you want to change your belief system, you have to create a new habit. Right, you've got to go and create the new habit, and you do this on a regular basis. I would argue on a daily basis to create a new belief system. And so it's all around, um, it's all around visualizing, it's all around affirmations. Uh, you know, there's other things that I do as well around meditation, um, you know, gratitude, and so on. Now, in regards to your limiting beliefs, so your fears, uh, in regards to um, your lack of self-doubt, uh, uh, your lack of self-worth, uh, so on and so forth, we need to be able to work our way through that. And there's a, there's a process that we that we do to work our way through the limiting beliefs, right? Uh, now, just on fears, I want to I touch on that uh, ever so briefly. Um, we are only born with two fears, right? So a fear of falling and a fear of loud noises. And so every other fear that you have, you have acquired that through your life. Uh, it's well publicized that I have a fear of heights and I'm working my way uh, through that, you know, but that's something that I have acquired through my life for whatever reason and I need to obviously get to the bottom of that. But, but the thing is that fear, you aren't, we're born with two types of fear, right? And so then the other thing with fear is that there's fear as in danger and fear as in uh, irrational fear. So fear is designed to, uh, designed to keep you safe. Right? It's designed to keep us safe. Right? And that's the one role of the mind to get, us through, uh, to get us through life, to keep us safe so that we survive. 
Danger, um, you want your fear to kick in when there's a dangerous situation. The problem is that um, fear kicks in with irrational fear. So that is fear of asking that boy or girl out, uh, fear of putting in a low offer for being criticised, uh, fear of progressing in, in a property deal, fear of failure, fear of criticism from other people, perhaps fear of success, you know, a whole lot of sabotage. And so these are things that we're constantly doing to ourselves. These are all irrational fears. You know, are you in danger? No, you're not. Are you in danger of putting in a low offer? No, you're not, right? But these are things, and we've concocted a whole lot of stories over and over and over again, and when you do it enough times, it becomes true, and it becomes you know, deep-seated into your subconscious. So there's some processes that we need to go through to, uh, hopefully that's the right way around. I've had to turn this around. So uh, in order to move forward, the first thing you want to do is you want to uh, identify what the limiting belief is. Right, so identify what the limiting belief is. So what is it that is, is your limiting belief? Right? Is it the fact that you have a, a, a fear, a fear of failure, a fear of criticism from other people? Uh, is it that you have a, a, a lack of self-worth? You don't feel that you're worthy. You don't feel you're worthy of being successful in property development. You feel that maybe someone else is better served uh, to do it. So you want to identify you know, what's the limiting belief. You then want to look to um, seek where that's come from. Where has that particular um, you know, limiting belief come from in your past? Uh, could it have been from your parents? Could it have been from your teachers? Could it have been from friends? Uh, the news? Uh, past experiences? There's a whole range of, of areas where that uh, limiting belief could have come from. And so you want to try to uh, find where that's come from. Not essential, but uh, you certainly want to try to find where, you know, seek the source of that particular limiting belief. A third one is to recognise that it's false. Recognise that the limiting belief is simply something that you've made up in your mind. You've told yourself something over and over and over again, and so it must be true. It must be true. Now, it's not. And so you want to recognise that it is, is false. It's a whole lot of BS that you've just concocted in your mind, this fear of failure or this fear of criticism from other people. Right? It's BS, and so you want to be able to recognise that. Um, the next one is that you want to be able to form empowering beliefs. So what does that mean? That means that you want to create something in your mind that's 180 degrees, the opposite of the limiting belief that you've got for yourself. So if you've got a, a limiting belief of a lack of self-worth, well, a new belief is that you are worthy. You are absolutely worthy of property development success. If you have a fear of something, a fear of, so for example, for me, a fear of heights, then an empowering belief is a love of heights. Now, I'm still working through that. I know this is a work in progress for me, but I'm sharing my own situation. But for you, it might be a fear of um, dealing with real estate agents, right? And the number of people, um, particularly starting out at a property development, who have this fear around dealing with agents, right? So the opposite of that is I love dealing with real estate agents, right? And so you want to be able to form uh, an empowering belief. The fifth one is around starting to act as if. Go back to the point I was making earlier around um, visualizing and affirmations and whatnot. Start to act as if you're a successful property developer, right? So you form this belief that instead of um, fearing failure, you're gonna love success, you're gonna love the success associated with property development. Start to act as if you're a successful property developer. Right? Start to have those thoughts that you are successful. You are absolutely getting out there and making a difference in property development. It doesn't matter where you are in your journey, but you start to visualize yourself. You start to say these positive things to yourself and you start to gravitate towards where it is that you want to get to. I have a saying, it's not mine, but I, I, but I use it often, which is be careful what you say to yourself because your mind's listening. So be careful of the things that you're thinking, the things that you're saying out aloud, because your mind is listening. And this is part of the training, my own training that I've acquired uh, along the uh, along my journey around um, NLP or neuro linguistic programming. You know, linguistic is language, right? It's the things that we say, it's the language that we use, and there's a lot that can be said for the language that you're using because it's a window into your thoughts. So when you're saying words such as um, "if I get that." If is not definitive, right? Or I can't, right? Or I should have, or I could have. Those sorts of things, they're not definitive. They demonstrate to me uh, and to someone who's trained in NLP that there's a lack of belief, 
right? So you need to start to act as if you start to focus on the language that you're using, focus on more you know, positive, definitive language, that will make a difference. Uh, and then the last one, hopefully that's, that's the right way The last one is to create uh, examples of success. So you're having success in another area of your life and you want to then transfer that success across into your property development space. So for example, for me, way back when I started, I lost heaps of weight. Uh, changed myself physically, but mentally I changed myself you know, phenomenally. And I said to myself, I remember this vividly, I said, if I can do that, if I can go and lose uh, a lot of weight in a short period of time and go through some extreme uh, you know, situations, circumstances to do it, if I can do that, then I can do anything that I put my mind to. And, and the next thing for me was in my property development space. Weight loss has zero to do with property development, but it's about creating some examples of success. Uh, you know, I was dealing with a client yesterday who uh, was working through some challenges in his own business and about uh, the inability to make, uh, you know, make, uh, sorry, talking about challenges in his workspace and the fact that he's unable to make strong decisions, right, in work and he's worried if he's gonna make the wrong decision. But yet we unpack the fact that in his business, he's able to make unemotional, strong decisions when it's related to his money, when it's related to his property business. But yet when it comes to his place of work, he's scared, he's worried, he's fearful of making the wrong decision. And he gets himself into such a state where he procrastinates. And so his decision is to not make the decision. And so he procrastinates, he puts things off, he puts things off, he puts them off, and then he rushes through uh, a solution. It's a half-baked idea. It uh, you know, doesn't always come off, and it's a mess, right? And so we unpack that, and we said, well, hang on a second, you're able, it's not that you can't do it. So is there a, a capability gap? And the answer is no. You're able to make strong decisions over here, so you want to leverage those examples over here and then apply them uh, into another part of your life. So they're the sorts of things that you want to do in order to move yourself forward regarding limiting beliefs. Um, so uh, I haven't got too many questions on here tonight. So look, please uh, ask some questions of me. Normally I've got Cheryl here asking me questions. She's keeping me honest and uh, on my toes. So I'd love for you guys to ask me some questions, put something in here. Uh, you know, it might be around limiting beliefs. It might be around another topic that you'd like me to discuss. More than happy to, uh, you know, give you my uh, best attempt at answering it. Um, but look, limiting beliefs, so I believe, are the reason, the fear, the fear of failure is a big one. Like if you want to be successful in property development, you have to work your way through fear of failure, right? You have to move forward. So many people aren't taking that step forward, you know, and they're holding themselves back because they're inside their own head and you've got to move forward. Now, property development, as all of you um, guys and girls will know, it's a risky game. You want to mitigate those risks, and there's a number of ways that you can do that. But once you've created a risk mitigation strategy, you then have to move forward. You then have to back yourself, and you have to move forward in your journey because it means that you're not going to get to your goal if you don't. You know, quite often I come on here and I talk about the imaginary gate system uh, that I use with my clients, that I use on myself, and, and that is that you've got your goal uh, down here, wherever that might be, it might be six months or 12 months or wherever, um, and so you've got the goal and you're here, and in between you and your goal are all sorts of imaginary gates. And when you come to a gate, and those gates are um, distractions, obstacles, frustrations, uh, temptations, a whole range of things, right? And so you come to those gates and you need to ask yourself, am I prepared to crash through the gate, at which stage you'll then crash through and have another gate and another and another and another and another because there's plenty of obstacles and, and challenges on your journey of success in property, business, life, you know, whatever. Or do you not want to... Uh, go through the gate to crash through that obstacle, at which point I would argue then that your goal isn't that big in the first place. It doesn't mean that much to you if you're prepared to let it go. So if you have a fear of speaking to agents, if you have a fear of putting in low offers uh, on properties, then you're never going to have success in property development. And so you need to really challenge yourself on your goal. If your goal is to use property development as a way to create wealth, if your goal is to use property development as a way to leave your day job, then for you, you're gonna need to learn how to put those low offers in. And the best way is to build the muscle. 
the best way is to start on it, right? So I've gone through a process uh, you know, earlier, those six steps to help you work through limiting beliefs. But see, here's the thing. The reason why you're feeling fearful is you've got this meaning in your mind, this meaning that is, hey, if I go and put a low offer in, I'm gonna get criticized, I'm, you know, something's gonna, something bad's gonna happen to me, so on and so forth. This is the meaning that you're applying to that. You're not in danger, right? You put a low offer in, and the more you put in low offers, you get comfortable in putting in low offers, and then you create a sport out of it, right? You have some fun with it. You learn to love putting in low offers, and I'm using a simplistic example, but the other one might be you know, fear of failure, or the other one might be fear of criticism from other people. You are going to get criticized. You know, you need to accept that if you do property development, you are going to get criticized, and there are going to be people closest to you who are going to criticize you. Your family, your friends, they're going to tell you, you're too old, you're too young, you're not good enough, Leave it to the experts. Uh, you don't have enough money. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, I, I, I've heard once that someone lost money doing property development. And so, in, in, you know, all property developers must be bad. It must be a risky game where you lose money. And that's someone's opinion. You need to be able to block out the noise from those people. You need to be able to back yourself. You know, back yourself and head in the journey uh, that you want in order to achieve your goal. Because if you want property development to be your answer for, for wealth creation or leaving your day job or financial freedom or whatever it might be, you have to be able to move forward and you have to work your way through the fear of criticism from other people or the fear of failure. Now we've got some questions coming through, which is, which is groovy. Uh, okay, so Chris is saying, what do you do when you don't know what you're doing? Uh, well, you, you look for, I'll guarantee you, Chris, that whatever you're wanting to do, someone has already done it. Someone has already done what you're trying to do. I, I, would, be, I would be surprised if you are pioneering, right? And so the reality is, because someone's already done it, you need to go and seek out those people. So who has done it? Are there people on this particular network uh, that have done what you're trying to do? Uh, and I'll bet you they are. Right, so you want to seek them out. You want to get along to networking groups. You want to seek out mentors and coaches and people who have done what you're trying to do. The other thing you can do is you can get on to that famous website, which is gogle.com. Google, type it in. How do I become a successful property developer? What are the steps to becoming a successful property developer? If that's what you're referring to, but you need to find people who are, have already done what it is that you're trying to do. You want to study the blueprint. You want to find out what they've done, how did they do it, and then you go and emulate that. You go and replicate that because they've actually laid the platform for you. So, mate, hopefully that's helpful for you. Uh, okay, David, I fear making the wrong decision leading to a financial loss. Too poor to fail. Well, uh, here's the thing, David. It's as simple as this. Thoughts become things. Right, so thoughts become things. So what, what is the, uh, one of the world's most famous books by Napoleon Hill? Think and Grow Rich. Right, Thoughts Become Things by a gentleman by the name of Earl Nightingale. Uh, Henry Ford said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Where I'm leading with this is that if you are focusing your effort, your energy on, I fear making a mistake, if that's where your thoughts are going on making a mistake, what do you think the outcome will be? you're gonna make the mistake, because that's where your thoughts are. If I'm fearful of making a mistake, that's what I'm gonna bring into my life. I'm going to make the mistake. And so for you, again, I, I get it, right? I get that property development is risky, but all of the people who are successful in property development, at some stage have had to put their left foot in front of their right and go, and you have to lean into it. And so it doesn't make it any easier, you still get butterflies in your belly. I still get butterflies in my belly when I'm you know, settling on a property that I'm about to purchase. But you have to go, you have to move forward. And so if you spend your time focusing on what if this goes wrong, what if I make a mistake, uh, what if I fail, uh, that, that, all this stuff, that is exactly what the outcome will be. That's exactly what the outcome will be. And so David, for you, it's not about focusing on the failure, it's about focusing on what you want. And I use the analogy of when you drive a car, where do you look? You look out the front window, forwards towards the direction that you're headed. So if you're looking towards the fear of making a mistake, that's not taking you towards your goal, is it? 
that's taking you further away from your goal. So it's all about focusing on a forward direction and looking towards where you want to get to. If you've just joined in, I'm not saying to do things in a risky fashion, like there's far too many zeros at stake in property development. So I'm not saying get out there and be careless. What I'm saying is mitigate your risks, create a risk mitigation plan, but then once you've got that, Put a bow in it, pop it in a box, and put it over here, and just focus on what you want. Focus on the outcome that you want, because when you focus on what you want, that's what you're going to get. So David, hopefully that has helped you, mate. I can see a few other people have uh, chimed in on that. Uh, good one, David, says Ray, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Jane saying yes, like David, fear of losing money. Jane, uh, Jane, if you're focusing on losing money, you're going to lose money. It's that simple. Thoughts become things. I cannot make it any clearer than that. Thoughts become things. So you want to focus on making money. What's the opposite of the fear of make, of losing money? It's the joy of making money. That's the opposite of that, right? So you want to focus on that because when you focus on the fear of losing money, you're going to lose money. That's what you're going to bring into your life. This is not easy. You know, this is not easy. This takes time to be able to be conscious with your thoughts. But But here's the key to all this. You need to create conscious awareness. So what does that mean? What it means is that we spend 90% of our day uh, operating on our subconscious, operating on the belief systems that we talked about earlier, these things that have been entrenched in us for our whole life or half our lives or whatever it is, a long time. And we operate our time uh, on our subconscious. And we're doing things without even realizing it. And the analogy that I use often is when you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off. What do you do? You flip the bird, you swear, you get angry, you get frustrated, so on and so forth. You're doing these things automatically on autopilot. You're not even thinking about doing them. And so what does that mean? That's, your, that's in your subconscious. That's your behaviors in your subconscious. So you need to be able to uh, recognize that and you need to be able to elevate your consciousness. And how you elevate consciousness is you need to reflect on how you behaved. You need to think about every day, was there a moment today when I was uh, acting in a fearful way? Did I procrastinate? Uh, And procrastination is linked closely to fear. There is a fear. So you might say, well, I'm putting that uh, activity off. I'm not doing that particular task. But ask yourself, why am I not doing that task? Why is it that I'm putting that off? Why is it that my kitchen has never looked cleaner and my garden has never been more beautiful, but yet the key task that I'm supposed to be doing isn't getting done? And it's because you're procrastinating. It's because in underneath that is a fear of something, right? And so you need to uh, get very conscious with that. And you do that every day. Reflect, what did I do? Uh, How did I behave? Uh, And the more that you start to become aware of it, what happens is your window between the action and the recognition of it compresses, it starts to become less and less. So it might start off being, you know what, you recognize a day or so after that you've done something and then it might be half a day and then four hours and then two hours and then one hour and then you're able to recognize when you're in that moment. And again, this thing takes time. You can't you know, solve this in a day or a weekend. It takes time, it takes practice, it takes effort, it takes continual creating of the habits, continual reflecting, reflecting on how did I perform, how did I behave, did I operate uh, you know, in a fearful manner or not operate because of fear. And you need to reflect on that and recognize it. And so, but here's the thing, when you've got conscious thoughts, still doesn't mean that you can, you're going to fix it, right? All it is is you're now aware. So as opposed to being subconscious, you're now aware. And now that you're aware, you still have the choice. You still have the choice to go, I'm going to ignore that and I'm not going to do anything with that or I'm actually going to act on that and I'm going to lean into whatever it is that's holding me back. So uh, hopefully that is, uh, that is helpful. Uh, David, I need to do whatever I can to mitigate the risk. I understand that. I understand that, but but here's the thing. There is risk, you're at risk of crossing the road. <clears throat> you're at risk of getting hit by a car. You're at risk of being in a motor vehicle, right? You're at risk. So, but you take that risk, you take that risk and you drive, you take that risk and you cross the road, right? You mitigate that risk, you mitigate the, the risk by driving defensively or mitigate the risk to crossing the road by looking left, looking right, etc. But there's risk involved. There's risk involved in everything. And so you need to, again, Develop a risk mitigation strategy, okay, but then put it aside. Put it aside for the day that you need it, but don't think about it. Don't think about it. 
right? And I'll give you a real life example with me, which isn't property related, but it's business related. Back in 2004 and five, I had an ice cream cafe and in nine months, I um, sadly lost $100,000. Incredibly painful um, time in my life. But the point I wanna make is that during that time, I kept saying to myself uh, that if this doesn't work, I just go back to another job. If this doesn't work, I just go back to my job. If, and I kept saying it over, if it doesn't work, I go back to my job. If it doesn't work, go back to my job. What did I do? What did I do? I self-sabotaged myself. I sabotaged myself. On reflection, I didn't realize at the time what I was doing, but when I look back and analyze it and did a bit of a post-mortem, I realized now that I sabotaged myself, right? I got, brought the outcome that I got, okay? And so if you're constantly focusing on the risk uh, side of things, on the fear of making a mistake, uh, then you'll do nothing. You will do nothing. So you need to mitigate the risk. Uh, property's a risky game. I'm not saying be careless. Please do not misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm saying get, get you know, work out your strategy, your risk mitigation strategy, but at some stage, you have to put your left foot in front of your right. David, rabbits don't drink champagne. Okay, not sure what that means. Uh, Cheryl suggests the audience goes through some exercises on uh, beliefs, complete sentences like, what have we got here? I believe successful property developers are, money is, yeah, my parents taught me that money is, yeah, exactly, so it's all of those things, right? It's all about, our parents have said things, money is the root, uh, root of all evil. Uh, don't talk to strangers, right? All these types of things that have come up, our parents, and our parents have done it innocently. They've done it because they feel that they're, they felt that they're trying to help us and keep us safe. And so I can't blame them for doing that. But here's the reality, when that something is said over and over and over and over and over, then it must become true. Um, when you reach a gate, here we go. Uh, Gabby is saying, I'm just trying to open out, oh, I can't open the rest of this, what you're saying, Gabby. Um, when you reach a gate, how do you manage the balance between acknowledge that it's another gate and a wonderful opportunity? I'm so sorry, Gabby, but I can't, I can't seem to open the balance of that um, question. Perhaps if you could, uh, or someone else could help me with the back end of that. I'd love to be able to help you. So when you reach a gate, how do you manage the balance between acknowledge that it's another gate and a wonderful opportunity? Look, the the um, sure potentially could could be an opportunity. Uh, but again, I would ask yourself: Is this something going to take me closer to my goal or further away? Right. So is it taking me closer to where I want to get to or further away from where I want to get to? And so this thing that you need to do, this thing that you need to do, is to challenge yourself on that. All right? And if it's going to take you closer to your goal, do that. Do that. If it's a wonderful opportunity that's going to take you closer to your goal, do that. If it's uh, something that's going to challenge you and it's an obstacle, but you need to get over that, around that, through that to get closer to your goal, do that. Because here's the thing. If you don't do it, what's the option? The option is you've just walked away from your goal. Your goal doesn't mean that much to you if you're prepared to walk away from it. Right, And so it's all about you recognize you have to do this next thing. I have to do this next task in order to get myself a property. You know, we talk about in the program that I do with Rob about 300 deals into the funnel. You have to put 300 deals into the top of the funnel to have one pop out down the bottom. So when the students come to me and say, well, Tony, this is a whole crock of crap and I don't believe there's properties out there for me and I can't find it. And I'll say, well, how many deals you put in the funnel? I'll put 50. Great, we've got 250 to go, right? So you've got to work through that particular, uh, particular obstacle. Also, those particular students who say that, if they say that they uh, can't find a property out there, then um, they're coming from a position of scarcity as opposed to a position of abundance because scarcity is lack. Scarcity is that there's not enough out there. Abundance is that there's plenty out there for everybody. It's just you haven't worked hard enough to find it yet. And again, these are all, you know, this is mindset. This is, um, uh, you know, different uh, perceptions that we come at. But uh, for me, it's all about abundance. The deal is out there. You just need to keep pushing harder, work harder, become resourceful. Where do I need to go? Who do I need to speak to? Put more offers in, uh, you know, send more letters to agents or sorry, not to agents, send to direct vendors, uh, you know, deal with more agents, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's how you find the deal in order to move uh, forward. Ray's saying thanks for the session. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate it, mate. Uh, any more questions for me? David's saying thank you. Uh, okay, so David, at least property is safer than share market, Jane, in my view, look, I'm not here to um, 
uh, to uh, comment on that other than to say that I've got all of my money in property and property developing. So that's, uh, I suppose, let my uh, my actions speak for my thoughts on that. Uh, thanks, Tony, reflections and actions. Jane, that's something you can absolutely be doing uh, on a daily basis where you can all do it. That's the only way that you're going to have conscious awareness of how you are behaving. As I said, 90% of what you do, you don't even realize you're doing it. I'll give you another example. You drive home from work. Uh, how often do you hop in your car and you drive home from work and you arrive home and you go, huh, you didn't think about it because you've driven home from work that many times, you just know the way to get home because you've done it over and over and over and over and you've created the habit, the habit and you're on autopilot and you just get home. And so the way that which we make change is we have to get um, conscious awareness and that gives us a chance to make change. Richard Hodges, go buddy, how are you? Good to see you on Saturday. Uh, glad that things are going well for you. Um, okay, Jane's saying, uh, not necessarily with time, property can be more, for, okay, you guys are having a bit of banter between share and property, that's fine. Ben, hello Ben, how are you mate? Um, okay, so Gabby's the second part of the question, versus an overpowering feeling of, well, this is it. Uh, this might just be <clears throat> might just be the last straw. Uh, so that's a feeling of FOMO. That's a feeling of scarcity. So I've got one of my clients who um, uh, did a live yesterday and she experienced a massive case of FOMO, fear of missing out. And what that did is it put her into a space where she broke her own rules. She broke her own rules. If something isn't going to fit with your property rules, don't force it. Don't force it, don't make it happen because that's when mistakes happen. Mistakes happen when people forget about what got them to where they are. They've got a whole list of processes and systems and things that they follow and they short circuit it. And they go, oh, you know, but, but I've just got to make this work for me. And I see it in property development all the time. People trying to make the fees work and adjust the numbers. And if only I could get a bit more for that property and if I could just, you know, reduce my costs a bit. And, I could, and, and it's like, you know what, don't force it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, this is a zero emotion game, property development. There are too many zeros at stake and you need to leave your emotion uh, at the door. Use your emotion for, for if you wanna go and buy a principal place of residence. Now I talked about my thoughts on that last week. I'm not here to uh, bring up that argument, but I'm just simply saying, use emotion for where you're gonna live. Don't use emotion for your development um, site. It's a business. Uh, this whole uh, live piece is around the business of property. And so you need to treat it with zero emotion. And I saw it yesterday with this whole, um, you know, this uh, a client of mine, uh, fear of missing out. And uh, this person acted in a way that she knows she was doing the, the wrong thing uh, and good on her for doing a live on it. But, uh, you know, she was coming from a position of scarcity. Whereas here's the thing, the deal of the century uh, happens every week. You just have to have a mindset of abundance and realize that it is out there and you just haven't found it. You just haven't looked hard enough uh, to find that particular deal. Uh, hopefully that helps you, Gabby. I'm sorry it's a bit disjointed with, I uh, couldn't see that all that question in one bit. Uh, Luke Maroney, hello buddy. Uh, looking forward to catching up with you uh, on the weekend. Luke's saying walk away. Uh, not sure what that's in relation to. Uh, okay, Cheryl's here. Great, Cheryl. Okay, how do I get you in, Cheryl? Just hang on a second. Uh, we're going to get Cheryl in. I'm going to add you in, Cheryl. Uh, bring Cheryl onto the camera. I want Cheryl on the camera because I need a break, to be honest. But now for the last oh God, 45 minutes, I've been chatting. So um, here we go. Hopefully Cheryl can come in. My yeah, mate, great to put a face to the, the name on the weekend. It was uh, fantastic. Oh, Cheryl, can you take over and do some talking, please? Because I am just all talked out. <laughs> I can't hear you. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Go. I can't hear you. Better now. Is that better? I can hear you. I got you. Yeah, got you. Yeah, got you. Perfect. Oh, there we are. There we are. I'm, I'm late to the party. Can you can you just talk for a bit because um, I I'm can, you, can you just Cheryl, talk? I've been going flat out. Yeah, I know you've been doing so well. Hold on, um, I'm not not sure why my my earphones keep. 
Okay, so we've got uh, Davina on. Davina, hello. How, how are you? Uh, yeah. Looking forward to catching okay. up this week, uh, this weekend uh, at the psychology. That'll be great. Uh, Fung, how are you? Uh, looking forward to catching up with you shortly. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, Davina, Luke loves FOMO. Uh, I don't love FOMO, uh, Davina. You and I have had a chat about that, so I don't love FOMO. Gabby, you and I have had a chat you. about that, so um, I don't love great. FOMO. Gabby, saying thank oh, you. I'm getting a whole um, lot of great. Um, reverberation here. Oh, I'm getting a whole lot of um, reverberation here. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Uh, okay, so, uh, uh, okay, so, okay, Cheryl's yeah, here, great, yeah, Cheryl, okay, okay, how do I get you in, Cheryl, give me a second, that helps. So we're going to get Cheryl in, we're going to add you in, Cheryl, uh, bring Cheryl onto the camera, I want Cheryl on the camera, because I need a break, to be honest, okay, 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 uh, okay, so, uh, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so, okay, so, okay, so, 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 I'll re-invite you back in. Okay, so let's uh, let me put this in first. So if I can get this sorted out, um, I know. For us all, uh, here we go. So let's see if we can get um, uh, Cheryl back in, and here's hoping that we can do this um, the right way. So we're going to add her back in. Sorry about that, folks. Um, that was uh, live TV, right? So anything, right. Can happen? So anything can happen. So, uh, here we go. Here we go. I don't know what was going on. So we're getting comments here to say that it was uh, wow and bad and all that sort of stuff. I'm still getting reverberation, but I'm not sure what's going on. No, um, the aliens were trying to get us. <laughs> okay. Can, can you talk Can you talk for a bit? Give me a break, please. I'll talk, I'll talk for the next 15, 15 yeah, perfect. minutes. Um, perfect. Seeing that you're going, you're going on with two hours because you've just had a, you had, you had a live with, with, um, with Jeff. I did. And I, I did. you were going, you were going great. Here I was trying to tune in between screaming children and um, mm, mm, and you. Mm, and I'm going, mm. I would really much prefer to be doing a live with Tony right now. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I, 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 I do love the, the the topic and the subject about beliefs and, mm. and each and every day. Um, I can't see the comments, by the way. Each and every day, um, I personally um, do challenge myself. Hmm. As to what my own belief system um, is and beliefs around various topics, and hmm. oh, I can hear you again. Yeah, so I think what's happening is it's playing on your your side. Your side. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what's going yeah, on. Sure what's going on. Well, and I can hear that. myself echoing, and then I've got all the comments here, and people are saying it's echoing as well. Really? Okay. Hmm. Maybe I have maybe I have to leave you for today. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost done anyway. So um, if there's anyone else who wants to add something or ask me something, then please do that. We've still got a few people watching, keen to help them as best I can. Um, yeah, it's a shame actually. It's a shame that we can't um, get it all sorted and overcome these technical issues. You, if you just keep you you talk and I won't say anything, that might be best for a while. Okay, you 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 rest. Um, one of the beliefs which I have found, <laughs> excuse me, a lot of people that um, are in, in a job and they're looking to break out of it, and there's, um, I've noticed, and even whether it's for myself, that we're so used to earning a certain level, whether it's 80 grand, 100, 150, 250, mm -hmm. we've actually created this belief system that, that that's all we're able to earn. Mm -hmm. And, um, and quite a few people actually find that quite difficult to break through that mm -hmm. because it's around also the people that, that you're around. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even the question, ask, and, and and this is where I challenge myself as well. I, I'm constantly asking the question around, do I actually believe that I, I deserve 
I deserve money and I, and I have these affirmations around each and every day, you know, um, uh, I deserve success, um, mm. you know, I, I'm filled with abundance, mm. um, I'm a magnet for, for you know, abundance and, 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 and good fortune and everything else because we are so used to, to, to probably being a little bit self-deprecating where we think, mm. no, 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 I can't necessarily feel that I'm, I'm worthy of success or wealth or to be able to be a successful property developer. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's those sort of beliefs, whether it's um, something that that you've been told, you know, in, in your younger years, or mm -hmm. something that you sort of feel that there's a bit of stigma around. Oh, um, uh, the 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 wealthy um, wealthy property developer who's just um, a real pain in the ass and and. And, and selfish and everything else, you know, is mm -hmm. there, a, you know, the, I, I think previously there was a big stigma around who the property developer is, whether mm. it's the Donald Trumps of the world, mm. but it's so different that like we're, we're doing different things, you know, amazing things in property, we're improving lives and, mm. and, you know, just even, even that belief and people don't, might not even realize they've got that belief. And that's why I've, I've sort of suggested write down sentences where you want to discover, you know, un 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 unravel or discover what innately or instinctively a belief that you might have hmm. um, without even knowing. Yep. So, so I have a uh, process that I take my students through, my clients through. So if people are interested in getting that, if they could just indicate that they'd like it, perhaps if you write the word yes into the comments, and what I'll do is I'll then reach out to you and I'll send it to a full-page document, and it's a whole list of questions to help people get clear on what are the limiting beliefs and start to really challenge your thinking. So it's quite a comprehensive list, and uh, I'm happy to you know, share that with people if that's going to help them move forward, because ultimately my objective is to just help me people move forward i mean it's just a uh, four page uh, you know information that i have created over time and i've got it through different sources but i'm happy to share that with people so please just put the comments uh, in the comments put yes and i'll touch base uh, with all of you any any sort of comments before we yeah, yep. what I want to say, yes, yeah, so, so I just, I've got, firstly, I've got all this sort of reverberation, but that's, I'll try and work through it. What I want to say is that people um, have, uh, uh, they operate like a thermostat, right? Uh, are you wearing an earpiece, by the way? I can't, it keeps dropping off. Well, I think that's the challenge. So I'm just getting comments here to say that because the guest isn't wearing the earpiece, that's the, that's the challenge. So, uh, John, thank you, mate. Appreciate your feedback. So the guest needs to wear headphones. All right. So, so what I'm saying is that people operate like a thermostat. So if you have a, a, a condition, if you have a, ce a ceiling that says, well, hey, I'm not going to be able to earn any more than $100,000, I'm not worthy to earn more than $100,000, etc., well, then you're not going to, and you're going to start to go and have some success, but then what will happen is you'll get to a point and you'll sabotage yourself and you'll stop doing it, right? And, uh, and you won't be able to break through because underlying – is a belief that you aren't worthy. You aren't worthy of earning more than $100,000. And so it's all about pushing through and saying, uh, you know, how do I go and create a new belief for myself? Because the reality is that the limitations are in your mind. That's it. You've created the limitations in here. There are no limits, right? There are no limits. You think about uh, all the wonderful things that people are doing. Right. I mean, there are truly no limits. I mean, people are awesome. Right? You just have to go on you know, Facebook and YouTube and look at all the really cool stuff that's going on. We are placing limits on ourselves. We are placing a limit, whether it be a financial limit, whether it be a skill limit, uh, whether it be whatever it might be. We place that on there. And so it's all about recognizing, hey, that's my thermostat. That's the, 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 the top of my of my range. And I need to break through that. And I need to set a new limit uh, for myself. Uh, I need to have a new belief, create a new belief so that I can go on and achieve whatever it is that I want and break through that uh, belief. Because here's the thing, right, is that if you have created a belief that's, that's limiting, you can, you can uncreate it, right? You can create a new belief and it's an empowering belief and it can be whatever you want. And so you think about, well, how have we created the belief? We've created these limiting beliefs through Again, our parents, our teachers, all this stuff over a long period of time. 
That's why we do things like visualization. That's why we do things like affirmations because we do these things on a regular basis to create the, the new belief within us, the empowering belief within us. And you need to do this stuff over a period of time. And like I said earlier with my diagram, you change the beliefs, your belief structure by seeing the result first, by seeing the outcome that you want for yourself by seeing that first, that's how you change uh, the belief. So Fung say, perfect. Just like putting fleas in a jar, uh, they've created a ceiling and then they take the uh, they take the, the lid off. And a great example, another great example is the elephants uh, over in, in, in Asia. You know, they've got these elephants that are, uh, uh, you know, roped up to these poles. And when they're little baby elephants, uh, they believe that they can't, break away from that pole you've then got these massive big element elephants now fully grown on this loose bit of rope they could easily easily just pull away from that but because they've had this belief system just ingrained in them ingrained in them that they are unable to move away from that particular pole they don't even try it that's the belief system right and that's what we do with ourselves we do that with ourselves in a whole range of ways uh, across our whole life and so the opportunity is to create the new belief system for ourselves, to create a different future for ourselves, right? So I, I, I was asked a question uh, on the previous live I did, what's one last thing I want to leave behind for people? And that is that your past does not need to equal your future. So what has happened has happened, right? Cannot change it, gone, right? But you can have a different outcome and you can have a different outcome by having a different belief by believing that you can have a, a better result for yourself, a different result for yourself, an improved result for yourself, right? But you need to create that. It all starts uh, through, through your belief. And uh, um, that, it's the certainty. It's the certainty of believing that you, can, uh, that you can achieve. Adrian Allen, hello, mate. Thanks for joining. Um, so that's, that's the opportunity for all of us, Cheryl, is really to work hard on our belief systems. You know, I've gone through um, tonight over the last, what, 45, 50 minutes, a whole range of ways that people can do that. Yeah. I've uh, put the offer out to people to say, hey, if you want my, uh, my four-page uh, PDF document, put, uh, you know, yes uh, into the comments and I'll, 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 we'll work out how we can get it through to you. Uh, you know, but um, I, I, I want people to be able to work their way through the limitations because I want people to be able to achieve whatever it is that they want for themselves and to have an enormous amount of success. And uh, you know what? If they've picked up a couple of things on listening to me rabbit on for the last hour that's helped them move forward and have success, well, that makes me feel pretty good. I may never realise that they, have, they may never come to me and say, hey, you help me. That's not why I do it. I do it because I think that I'm making a difference. And so that's enough uh, for me. Of course, if people want to, uh, if people want to uh, um, come up to me and say thank you, then uh, I certainly won't reject it, but, uh, but that's not why I do it. <laughs> what are you saying? What are you laughing at? What, what are you listening? Are you, what are you a few minutes behind? Are you, are you listening to... Uh, it is. Are, you, lis it are is. you? You're listening to what I said about five minutes ago. Uh, okay, oh, well, you're, you're so, so okay, we've got te technical dish issues. Uh, we've been going for almost an hour. Uh, any last questions of Cheryl or I, please uh, put them in as a few yes pleases. So uh, uh, to all the guys and girls who've done that, I'm going to send you something out. We'll just, uh, I'll DM you and we'll work something out. Uh, so that's, that's easily done. Uh, but anyone else want to ask anything uh, before I just go and collapse? Quite frankly, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm, uh, I'm done. I'm all talked out. I know that those who know me well would think that's quite a rarity. Uh, and in fact, let me share with you. So uh, two weeks ago, I climbed the bridge, uh, Cheryl, the, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And uh, mm -hmm. for those of you who, um, who follow me will know that I have a fear of heights. And so it was quite a, um, a big moment for me. And I did my live before and my live um, after. I, I couldn't do the live um, on the bridge. They wouldn't let me take the, the phone up uh, as much as I tried, but they said no. But any, anyway, um, uh, what's, what's my point now? I've lost, I've lost my point to that. Oh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Don't worry. It'll, it'll, oh. You did it. You did it anyhow. I, I, I did it anyhow. And that wasn't my point, but anyway, my point, my point was I did it. I'm, I'm thinking about something else and I've just lost my train of thought. But here's the thing, right? So, um, uh, so how's this? I haven't shared with you that on the weekend we had the seventh birthday bash for Property Development Network, uh, yep. Rob Flux's group, seventh birthday. He brought me up on stage to say thank you. And here's what he gifted me. 
he gifted me a free skydive. So talk about <laughs> leaning to your talk about leaning to your fears. Uh, he's gifted me a free skydive. Uh, Adrian oh, Allen, awesome. who's watching, he'll know he knows all about it. Uh, so it's going to be happening in about two months' time. So there'll be plenty of lives going on at that particular occasion. But uh, there you go. So uh, you know, leaning into uh, leaning into my fears well and truly. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's coming up in a couple of months' time. Mm. So here I am you're, saying you're to everybody about how you've got to you know push through your own limitations and all those types of things. And this is now uh, you know, and I do that uh, plenty of plenty of examples where I do that myself. But I haven't. Uh, quite uh, cracked the uh, fear of heights and so I'm pushing into it actually that was the point I was going to make about the fear of heights my sincere apologies is that when I was up there uh, because I do have a fear of heights I was very um, uh, reflective and very introspective and I was incredibly quiet and a lot of people who were either side of me were commenting that they've never heard me so quiet um, because normally I'm uh, I'm all up for a chat. So that was the actually that was the point that I wanted to make is that um, you know, when I go through that I get incredibly quiet. So if ever you want to quiet me down, then uh, you know put me up on heights and that'll that'll guarantee to do the job. But I'm working through it. So who knows? I will uh, uh, push through. Uh, jump out of a plane and, uh, you know, I, I will become accustomed to heights. I'm yeah, thinking, well, well done. I'm, we'll see how quiet you are when you jump out of that plane. <laughs> when I tell you what, when, when, when he announced it, right, so he announced it in front of everybody on Saturday. For those who were at the meetup, uh, they will recall the moment. Uh, I had a, 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 a light-coloured shirt on. And the colour drained from my face. My face became the same colour as my shirt. It literally just was one because I, my stomach, my stomach sank, right? And and oh, then, but here's goodness. the kicker, actually, which I haven't shared with you, is that not only has he gifted me a skydive, but I'm to be strapped to him. <laughs> I'm just distracting him. Jane, Jane was there. Jane was in the front row. Uh, so Jane's commenting. She's saying, woo, woo. So Jane was in the front row. Uh, and she knows exactly because I, I remember looking at Jane actually on Saturday. And I even asked her, Jane, uh, what's the colour of my face? And Jane will know exactly what the colour was. The, uh, it was just honestly, I sank. You know, I'm incredibly grateful to, to Rob for the, for the gift, of course. Uh, but I'm shitting myself. Am I allowed to swear? Oh, yes, I am. Uh, I'm shitting myself. So uh, it's going to be an interesting moment for me. Mm. Excellent. Mm. Anything else? Uh, Cheryl, okay. We're, look, we're rabbiting on here. Uh, yes, my, oh, my face was red. There you go. Jane saying my face was red. Hey, look, Cheryl, we might hang up. Hey? I've been going for an hour and we've got some technical yeah, issues. And I'm, exha I'm, exhaust well. I'm exhausted. And, Thank yeah, you. No, hey, that's okay. Happy to help out. Happy to help out. Um, no. Yeah, so uh, um, anyway, we'll, we'll do this again next week, right? We'll come up with something else yeah, and, course, and help, uh, help help the viewers out. So uh, uh, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, thank you to everyone who cared to watch. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Jane says thank you. Thank you, Jane, for watching and sticking around. Uh, and just a little plug, it'd be remiss of me if I didn't. For those of you who are in Sydney, I'll be in Sydney this weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, the psychology of property development. For those who are in Melbourne, I'll be in Melbourne in uh, a couple of weeks' time. I think it's the 7th and 8th of, uh, of September in Melbourne. We're going to do the psychology of property development down there, two days. If you want to learn more about it, I'm going to put that, those notes in the show notes or the, the details in the show notes. We'd love to have you come along. We'd love to um, firstly say good day, and we'd love to share with you how you can move forward in your property development journey uh, and property uh, in general. So it's all about the mindset required to win. Uh, David's saying, also a fear of heights. I've taken enough risk, so happy to be on the ground for now. Good on you, David. Uh, and for you, mate, it's all about taking action. So uh, we talked about that a little earlier on in the live. Cheryl, any last things for me? No, thank you so much. And uh, you did extremely well. Thank you. You go thank and, you. and give, your, give your throat a little bit of a rest. I am. I'm going to have some honey, honey lemon right now. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Have a good night. All Bye, right. Cheryl. Good night, Talk everyone. Soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.